Okay, so this is the fourth unit in the uh, topic on files for FIS 2320 Computing 2. And uh, this uh, Jupyter Notebook that these slides are derived from is available to download from the Minerva module pages for students at the University of Leeds. Okay, so the first part of this unit, uh, we're going to talk about uh, navigating around the uh, hard disk or uh, storage of your computer. So uh, in most practical situations, you want to be able to go and open and save files, not just from the uh, directory or the folder where your Python script is running, but from somewhere else on your disk where you're going to keep that data or you need to put it back again. So uh, just a bit of nomenclature. Um, when we say um, directory um, uh, and folder, we're using this more or less interchangeably to mean the same thing. Um, so a, a directory uh, uh, in your computer stores a series of files, um, and it can also store subdirectories or subfolders. And it's the same basic thing that you see when you open a file explorer window, you, you're getting a view of a particular directory or folder on your disk. So the first thing is simply to say, well, how do you specify um, that the file you're trying to open or save is in a particular directory um, uh, in, in your computer? So for that, you need to specify a complete path to the file. So this depends a bit on which uh, operating system you're using. Um, for historical reasons, uh, in Windows, each disk is assigned a different drive letter. Um, so C is the usually the, the first hard disk drive of your computer. Um, and is where the operating system is stored. Um, we start at C because drive letters A and B were traditionally reserved for floppy disks, uh, which I don't think we've sold a computer with a floppy disk for probably 15 years at least now. Um, uh, uh, they were an alternative form of magnetic uh, storage in which the, uh, the medium on which the magnetic storage was written was made out of plastic and so they were literally floppy to distinguish themselves from hard disks where the magnetic medium was uh, coating a metal disk. Uh, and then uh, letters above C were used either for other hard disk drives or also for CD and DVD drives and of course now for USB drives. And then higher that drive letters um, such as M or N or P or whatever uh, are tra traditionally used for um, disks that are actually accessed over the network. <clears throat> you sometimes also see um, that you can refer to servers and directories as a double slash server backslash directory. And this is something which is called a UNC path. Uh, in contrast to that, uh, Macs and Linux systems both actually have their origins uh, in the world of Unix mainframe computers. And in these systems, uh, all the physical hard disk drives were combined together to create a single tree of different directories that all started off from um, what was called a root directory, which was accessed with just a single slash. Um, so that's why there are differences between the different platforms. Um, so open and functions like numpy, gen from txt and so on can go and uh, take a full path to specify how to find your file. Um, so you can simply specify these. So this is on the Windows system um, as the drive letter and then the series of directories and separating them with slashes. And we'll come back to which sort of slashes to use, but you'll see here I'm using forward slashes. Okay, so on a Mac and a Linux, the uh, uh, um, separator between different directories you write in the path is always a forward slash. Um, uh, and this is um, what the operating system uses, so it, it's nice and straightforward. Um, Windows, of course, has to be different. And in Windows, it uses a backslash. The problem with this is that, as far as Python is concerned, a backslash character in a string is used to say the next thing after this is going to have a special meaning. So that backslash n means the new line character, backslash t is a tab. So therefore, to get a real backslash, you have to have a backslash backslash um, in order to just get a single backslash. So uh, you can specify your paths um, with backslashes simply by doubling them all up like this. Um, so in that case, you're using the backslash in the way that the operating system uses, but everything is doubled um, to make sure that Python recognizes that you've got backslashes there and you're not trying to do backslash capital T and backslash cap, uh, small d in, in this particular path. Uh, of course, this is really annoying. 
um, and, and can get really messy. So there's an alternative, and that is you can tell Python that this is uh, what's called a raw string, meaning that the backslashes are not being used to say that the next character is doing anything special. And so you signify something as a raw string by putting an R before the opening quote. And so you can do R quote and then just write down the path as it is. And that's really handy if you're going to copy a path out of a, um, uh, the, the address bar of a folder. So if you're in Windows and you open the File Explorer, you can copy the address out of the address bar and paste it into your Python. You just need to put a, an R at the front of the string uh, before that opening quote, just to say this is a raw string. Um, and it works fine. And then, as we said, you can just use the forward slashes and Python will understand that if you're using forward slash somewhere where you could be talking about a path, that it really means um, that you're separating out a directory. Um, you as well as specifying the full path to somewhere, you can also specify what's called a relative path. So saying, go to this directory relative to where I am. Um, and if you do that, then the dot, single dot as a directory name is a shorthand for the current directory I'm in. And double dots is a shorthand for the parent directory of where I currently am. So you can specify, say, um, you want to go up one directory and then into a different subdirectory by doing dot dot slash and then the name of the subdirectory. And we'll see a few examples of that later. OK, so. Um, uh, first of all, we want to go and try and work out where you are in the, in um, on the disk um, as your starting point. If you want to work out a relative path, then you need to know where you're starting. So we're going to make use of several modules in the in this video tutorial unit. Um, and one of the most uh, basic ones we're going to be using is the OS module, uh, which is used for uh, operating system interactions. And it has a sub module, which we're going to use a lot, which is OS.path. Um, that uh, has a lot of functions that help uh, manipulate and deal with uh, file names and file name paths. So your first question is say, well, where am I? Um, and for this, the OS module has a uh, function, uh, get CWD, which stands for get current working directory. Um, and it simply does this and it returns the, the directory of where you currently are. Um, if you're operating in um, something like Spider or, or Jupyter Notebooks, where you're actually interacting with an IPython um, console, um, then IPython has all kinds of interesting little extra bits of magic that, like, that helps you do stuff. And some of the bits of magic it gives you is direct access to some built-in commands that will tell you things about the disk uh, and let you look at where you are and what's in the current directory and so on. So these are not actual Python um, commands. So you can't use these in a Python program, but if you're just sitting at the in a Jupyter Notebook or at your IPython console and just want to know where you are or what that file was called again, then it works just fine. And so you can do uh, PWD, uh, which stands for Print Working Directory, and it does the same thing as the little Python snippet I did above, but just in one line. So then you might also want to be able to go and change directory, having worked out where you are. Uh, and so there is the function os.chd, or change directory. Um, and it simply takes in as a string the name of the directory you want to go to. So um, here I'm printing where I currently am. I'm changing to C temp. Um, and then I'm printing where I am again. Uh, and then I'm going back to where I started from because I have the variable that I created in the previous snippet. Um, and again, um, the um, IPython uh, console and shells have a command built in to do that for you as well. Again, this is not part of Python, so you can't use this in a Python script, but you can just use it if you're just sitting away typing things into the console. And it's CD for change directory. Um, which is also, I should say that if you're on a Linux or a Mac machine, the um, IPython console commands are in fact the same as the terminal um, uh, window commands. Uh, and this comes about because Python basically originates from the world of Unix and, and Linux. Uh, and so here you see I've, I've done the CD and I've um, done a, a print working directory 
a PUID to just show I have actually changed directory. Okay, so we know how to find where we are. We know how to change directory to somewhere else in the system. So the next thing we need to be able to go and do is show what files are already there. So listing the files, um, uh, the easiest way to go and do this uh, is um, if you're just sitting at the console, is just to use the ls for uh, list. Um, uh, and if you do that, it gives you a, a nice little directory listing. Um, so this is in fact the directory listing of the things used to make uh, these videos. Uh, and you can also say, show me just the, uh, say, .txt files uh, in a directory by asking it to uh, do ls quotes star.txt. And we'll say a little bit more about what that star.txt is doing uh, there. Okay, um, if you want to go and do this in code, because remember those, the ls is a, a IPython console command, it's not a Python, uh, uh, valid Python command, so you have to go and, or Python function. So uh, to do it in code, you use the os.listdir um, as your function. Um, and you can use it like this. So um, you simply call it, um, and it then gives you a thing uh, in say like a for loop and it gives you a list of the files and directories that are part of the um, the current directory. You can also specify as an argument to list uh, if you want to do a list there of a particular directory on your hard disk. Okay so that's fine that, that's doing the same as just the ls. Um, if you want to just say get the txt files you could uh, do something like this. So we have the same for loop with um, uh, listing the directory. Um, and then um, I'm using a, a os.path function called split ext, which uh, will get out the extension. And we're going to come and talk a little bit more about those in just a second. Um, and I say, well, if that extension is .txt, then, um, I'm, well, if it's not .txt, I'm going to continue. I'm going to just look at the next file. Uh, so if it isn't .txt, then I'm going to print out um, the name of the file that I've got. Um, that's a bit painful um, for what ought to be much simpler. And so there is a, a much easier way, which is to make use of the glob module. So a glob is a, um, a, a simple way of describing a, a pattern that matches um, file names. And it's used widely uh, when you're um, working with the command line prompt in operating systems. Uh, and basically the rule is that a star uh, matches everything um, apart from the directory separator and then the, the dot that marks the file extension. Uh, a double star matches um, a whole string of directories and subdirectories. Um, a question mark matches a single character. And then if you put some letters in square braces, it means match any one of these letters. Um, and if I put an exclamation mark first, it means uh, match anything which is not one of these letters. Um, so we can use that uh, like this. So I import the glob module and I'm doing for uh, my file name in glob.glob .glob, um, and then I give that glob function. So this is calling the glob function in the glob module and the parameter I'm passing to the glob function uh, in this case says I want to match things which don't start with the letter D uh, and do finish with .txt and can have anything else in the middle. Um, and so when I uh, print those file names, in fact, there's only one there, which is output.txt. So glob.glob .glob is a really quick and handy way of saying I want to look just at the files which match this particular pattern um, without having to go through uh, and look at every single file and decide whether it does or doesn't match the pattern you're interested in. Okay, you can also get other um, useful information um, about a file with those os.path functions. Um, so you can get its size. So there's a, a os.path.get size, which will return the size of the um, uh, file in bytes. You can get um, uh, some information about the various times. So with every file, there's three times associated with it. There's a time you created it for the first time. There's the time you last changed it, the modification time, and there's the time you last accessed the file, in other words, last read, read it. 
So um, these are called the C time, the N time, and the A time for create, modify, and update, uh, and access. Um, so there's a get MC time, get M time, and get A time functions. Um, and what those actually return is the num number of seconds since 1970 on the 1st of January um, that uh, since the file was um, uh, created, modified, or, or accessed. So you get back a, a not particularly helpful long number, um, uh, but you can turn it into a small sensible thing with another Python uh, module called date time. Uh, and I'm not going to go through a full description of the, the date time module here, but I'm just going to show a quick snippet. Um, so I'm importing um, a, a thing called date time from the date time module, and that date time um, uh, that I've imported itself then has um, a, a method. So, I mean, technically what I'm doing is the date time is in fact a new data type. It's a, a like an int or a float or a, a string or whatever, or a file. It's a special um, type of object in Python that represents a date and a time. So I'm saying import the date and time type from the date time module, and I'm using that. Um, so it has a dot from timestamp method, which will take in one of those long numbers and will go and convert it to uh, a date and a time that sort of you can work with. And then that date and time type uh, has a dot date method, which just tells me what date that is. Um, so anyway, that little bit of step it is just a way of getting at the actual um, date that's uh, represented by those timestamps. Um, and you can see it was um, in the middle of October 2020. Okay, um, so uh, still more things you can go and do with um, uh, the os.path um, module. So I've said previously, one of the problems with working with files is you're always slightly worried that um, uh, the path might have, dis the file might have disappeared or um, uh, somebody else has gone on and deleted it or, or, not, or not allowed you access to it. So um, the os.path module has some helpful functions to check what's going on there. Um, so the first thing is uh, os.path exists. So is this a file that actually exists on the hard disk or is it just a, a name you've made up? Um, and then you can check, well, it could be, so just because the path exists doesn't tell you whether it's actually a file or a directory. So um, os dot is dir and os dot um, uh, um, is file will, will help you sort this out. So the, the problem here is that the, the list there and the glob simply just return you names of things that are in the directory. And they don't distinguish between whether well, this thing is a file and this thing is a directory. And so having got the list of things that are in your directory, you need to work out, is it a subdirectory or is it a file? Um, so as I said, um, is file will return true if the thing actually is a file. Um, and is dir will return true if the thing is a directory. So from this, we conclude that our output.txt is unsurprisingly a file and not a directory. Um, and there are in fact some uh, other corner cases of things that are neither strictly files nor strictly directories that um, where uh, these functions would both return false. So you're always better off if you want a file, check whether it is a file, whether it is file, than simply assuming that if it's not a directory, it must be a file because that's, that's not actually always going to be true. Okay, so um, we said that previously you could specify uh, paths as being an absolute path or a relative path. And so you might want to go and check whether you've got if you're say inside a function, you might want to check whether the path you've been specified actually is a, um, an absolute path, which starts with a drive letter or starts with the root directory, if you're on Linux or a Mac, um, or whether it's a relative path that's starting from your, your current location. Um, and uh, so um, there's a is abs for is absolute uh, function within os.path which will tell you, yes, it's true if it's an absolute path and false if it isn't. Um, uh, and so you can see here that if I pass it um, a relative path to the parent directory, it tells me that's a relative path, not an absolute path. OK, um, if you have a relative path, then you might actually want to know, well, what's the real absolute path that this corresponds to? Um, and so there's an os.realpath function 
that will convert um, your relative path to an absolute path. And if you've got an absolute path, then you might say, OK, well, I've got um, this absolute path um, that I want to go to, and I'm, I'm at this other absolute path. What's the relative path to go from one absolute path to this other absolute path? So what's the relative path between two, two paths? And uh, os.rel path will do that for you. So, um, uh, and in fact, actually, rel path will even work with relative paths. So it'll tell you a relative path between two relative paths. So it works out the real path between both of them and then works out what you have to do to get from one real path to the other real path. So in this case, it's telling me how to get to um, uh, C temp from my current directory, which basically involves going up lots of parent directories and eventually getting to the, the, the drive letter, the root directory on the drive letter, and then going down temp. Um, but it, it's, um, it will uh, tell you how to get from A to B. OK, so I've sort of hinted already about um, needing to work with different parts of the file names. So if you have a, a whole path to a file, um, then you can think of it as being um, several different parts. So if you're on Windows, then you will have a drive letter at the start. Um, you then have a set of directories, each of which are separated by um, the directory separator character. Um, and then you have the actual, um, what we call the base name of the files, so the actual um, bit of that individual file that's the, 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 long, the long part of the name. Um, and again, historically, these had different uh, rule, uh, different name conventions. So um, uh, historically on uh, uh, Windows PCs, if you go back 25 years or so, then uh, all the file names had to be eight characters, then a full stop, and then three characters. Um, but that's all got changed in Windows 1995. So, um, uh, and we've got long file names that can uh, be up to 256 characters uh, long. Uh, Max um, traditionally had a limitation of 32 characters, uh, and they had, didn't have anything about um, having a dot and a, and a file name extension. Um, and again, that's now um, largely lifted. But you have that base name of the file. And then you have typically uh, still a uh, dot and then a extension, which again, because of this history of, of 25 years ago of Windows um, is traditionally dot three letters long. And on Windows machines, that is what defines the, what the type of the file is, what the operating system thinks the file type is. So as far as Windows is concerned, the file name ends dot txt then the thing is a text file. If it ends uh, .docx, then it's a Word document file. Um, on Macs and Linux, they uh, still have file name extensions because um, it's a handy way for people to give some kind of convention to the name of the file, but they don't rely on that for telling you what the actual file format is. They actually look at what the contents of the file is, uh, which is a little bit, um, maybe a little bit more sophisticated. Um, the um, thing you want to appreciate, though, is just simply changing the name of the file does not change the file format. So if you have a word.docx file and you rename it to the .pdf, you have not made a PDF file. You have simply made a file that has an extension that doesn't match the format of the data that's actually inside it. Um, so the actual um, information inside your file um, defines what the format that is being that's being used is. The file name extension uh, just simply gives you a hint. And in fact, the other thing you can find is that in modern versions of Windows, they tend to encourage you to hide the file name extension. Um, and so they the actually have to go out of your way to turn on the file name extension so you can actually see what they are. Um, and this is done precisely to go and stop people from randomly renaming the file name extensions and thus confusing the operating system as to what the type of file is. Um, anyway, so those are the things you might want to, um, to sort of separate out as separate things, and os.path gives you all kinds of functions to go and deal with that. Um, okay, so um, first of all, if you want to join um, together different directories in the file name in order to make a valid directory, rather than just simply gluing it together with doing the slashes yourself manually, um, os.path will go and do it in a way that gives you um, always make sure you produce a valid um, file uh, file path. 
So os.path.join um, will take any number of um, uh, parameters and it will assume that they are um, directories or parts of directories and it'll assume the last one uh, it'll think of as being the file name and it'll glue them all together uh, with the correct separator. Um, so in Windows, for example, it glues them together with backslashes, whereas if you're on a Linux or a Mac, it'll glue them together with forward slashes. Um, then we've already uh, met um, some of these things. So os.path.split um, will take whatever um, path you've given it as a string, and it'll go and look for the last um, part of that path using whatever the correct um, separator is for that particular um, platform and um, uh, separate on that. So simply do, undoing what we did with path.join in this case. Uh, and then uh, split drive, uh, as you might guess, uh, separates out the uh, drive letter. So this only works on Windows um, and then gives you the rest of it as, a, a, as the rest of the path. And then split.extension ext we've met before, uh, and that simply takes out the, um, the file name extension off the end of it. Um, and then um, there's a couple more um, uh, ones. So base name um, does basically a split and then takes that last part, and dir name does a split and takes the first part. Uh, just all in one go. So given a full path, that'll tell you the, the bit that's the file name and its extension, and the bit that's the, the full path to where that file is. Okay, and then finally, um, if you're not quite sure which your drive separate, the, the separator for the directories ought to be, um, if you're not quite sure which operating system your script is running on because you've written it for somebody else to use, then uh, os.sep will tell you what the uh, separator is for the directories on whichever operating system you're on. 